Got it. Okay, we're live. Hey, everybody out there. How you doing today? Um, my name is Port Cunningham, and I'm here with uh, our guest today, Gail Fowler. I don't know where the world's handsomest man is yet. Maybe he's having a nap. <laughs> but uh, he'll probably show up in a bit. But anyway, this is the Pork and Beans Show, and, and thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And, and especially thank you, Gail, for, for stopping in and sharing your time with us. Glad to be back. Yeah. So how have you been? Oh, been busy. Went to Hawaii, came back, and <laughs> having a good old time. So it was nice to be back and nice to be um, able to share the stories uh, with your group. So you're actually... From Hawaii originally, right? Correct. Yep. How, how long? How long has it been since you've lived there? Uh, we moved in '96, so it's been a while. You know, okay. it's a, um, my kids are basically, um, you know, although my oldest was born there, we left when he was two and a half, and now he's at 28. So it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, but you still call it home. You still think of it as home. Yep, still call it home. Um, I, I don't know why it's always been that way. Uh, even with my, I, with my husband does the same thing. <laughs> but what Island, also Colorado too. So awesome, yeah, Colorado's an awesome place. So what, um, what uh, island were you from? I grew up on Oahu, so that's is where that the big is. Is that where they call the Big Island? No, the Big Island is um, is further, uh, it's further down the chain. So, but I did have family um, on the Big Island, and I actually lived there for a couple of years as well when I used to work at the hotels. So, yeah. Okay. So when you were when you were there, were you aware of of Sasquatch and, and stuff of this nature, cryptids and uh, elementals and things like that? Have you always been aware of them? I I have, and I was. Um, although I never thought there were Sasquatch in Hawaii because you know they're only on the mainland. <laughs> But we've had some amazing stories. Um, in fact, one of the stories when I did work at the, it used to be a Hyatt there. It's a big mega resort on the um, big island. And um, there's a guy, the security guy kept asking me, I hear him, you know, checking out. He goes, do you believe in ghosts? I'm like, sure. Yes, I do. He goes, no, do you really believe in ghosts? I said, yes, I do. So he showed me a picture and it's basically the the building that I walked I worked in from floor to I think it's four 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 stories up. There's it looks like an elevator shaft, but it's got mirrors all the way to the top. And in that, it looked like from the inside somebody pushing out, there was oh. etched a very very tall, probably closer to eight foot tall, being. It looked like the man couldn't really tell because it was like a little distorted. And then there was something shorter with him. So they're saying, oh, that's a, um, you know, Hawaiian warrior. But now that I think back, I says, that could have been, you know, our furry friends looking in there and seeing. But what was unusual was when you touched the glass, it, feel like, it felt like it was etched in. So yeah. they had to replace the glass and everything. So there are many stories about the giants in Hawaii. So that's where they could be, you know? You know, I, I also think, because my wife had, was in Hawaii recently, and she, actually she's going back because uh, her daughter's having a baby and she's going back to help her out. You know, poor, poor, my poor wife, eh, having to go back. <laughs> no, <it's laughs> terrible. Be, oh, yeah. uh, horrible. <laughs> but she'll be there for another five weeks. And she was initially there for two months, but um, she had Sasquatch experiences there. and. Um, as you and I know, you know, they can really go anywhere where the people they connect with are. So right. they, they, you know, I mean, they can appear in your room like they have with me or they can or they can or they can appear or they can do things in a little park across the street from you. They mm -hmm. pretty well go where their people are. So exactly. um, I'm not sure if the ones that she saw were there or live live there or it was just the ones that she's connected with that uh, that showed up. But uh, it was really, really interesting. I'll just briefly tell you what happened. Um, she took a picture of a volcanic rock. Uh, she was up on a, a volcan volcano with uh, with a friend who lives there. And um, she took the picture and she distinctly remembers seeing the picture. And then when she looked at it later, there was a, a friendship welcome X, which is our interpretation of the X. Mm -hmm. 
not going to be everybody's, but it's all individual uh, from my experience. And uh, it was just sort of like um, just superimposed in the picture. It was not there when she initially took it. But when she looked at it after the fact, they had put the X there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was her first thing. <laughs> and that was just, and it was funny because I think the day before or whatever, or shortly before that, she was asking if they were with her there and she wanted some signs. So that was one of the signs. The other sign was her daughter saw one looking at her through a mirror in the house. It was standing in the mirror and she was calling her, mom, mom, come on down. And her daughter's not really, uh, she's not afraid, but she's not into the subject of Sasquatch. She's not, uh -huh. not her mindset. But uh, that was just after she had asked if they were going to be there too. So they were there. They appeared in that in that sense, and it was like a really distinct image. And then they left a couple other things. So once again, now whether that was uh, the local Sasquatch or if it was just um, you know some that were just visiting her to keep to to let her know that they're always with her, uh, it could be either way. Um, I think those traveled with her is what I'm getting. They just wanted her to know that, yep, you asked us if you asked if we were here, we just we just let you know we're here. We're visiting. But there are local ones as well. So that was that that's what I got too. I I I, I yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm getting that. I get confirmation in a different kind of way, especially on the show. I get it like energetically. I just get an energy nudge, mm -hmm. like a, a yes or a no kind of nudge. And and I'm and I'm thinking that they traveled with her too. Yep. Actually. Um that's that's ab absolutely what I'm getting as well, which which is kind of neat and comforting and uh, knowing that they they care for the people that they connect with. Right. I mean, yeah. I'm sure that they've shown you that in many ways, and maybe we can get into that in, in a bit. But I was going to ask you. Um, so you think that Sasquatch are also local to uh, to Hawaii, but uh, what other um, and I think we talked about this a little bit your last show. But what other elementals and, and um, cryptids are there? I know there's some little people that are mm -hmm. currently there. We call them many, of? yeah, many hoonies. So many hoonies, um, they're known, I would say, I guess most people may say they're more like leprechauns in a sense, but these, they're very um, gifted builders. So they're architects. And there are many um, uh, buildings that they've created um, that's still left, you know, in, intact, even with the, the civilizations coming in and cities, there's certain places that just remain. And there's one of them, um, I can't remember the name of it, but they built like a little dam and that dam is still there and there's no, you know, no cement, no nothing. It's just the rocks and, uh, but the, the amazing things that they built and uh, many people have seen them. And my my grandmother, my mother's mother, who lived on the Big Island, um, she told my mom once that she said she works in her garden. And now her garden is different from what most people would think because her house was built on the edge of the mountain. So it's coming down. And so it's mainly lava rock. So she's got her plants growing there. And then the the dirt has a mixture with the, you know, with the um, ground lava rocks and things. So she said, well, she's working in her garden. She would see them but she'd pretend that she didn't see them so they wouldn't mess with her. <laughs> and I, that's pretty funny because they are mischievous, you know? So she's seen them a lot and I'm like, whoa, you know, I said, why didn't, why didn't I know this about her when she was alive? You know, I found out after the fact. So there are many of those type of things. There's other, um, on the, there's so many legends about them too. One of them is where um, if you're driving your car up the Pali Road um, or Pali Highway. If you have pork in your car, they say it's pork cutlet or something like that, your car will die. It will just stop until you let the pork, uh, you know, throw it out or whatever, because this, the belief is that the many homies love pork. So if you've got exactly. it and they want it, they're going to make you stop and let it out. <laughs> so there's been many stories. <laughs> yeah. uh, what do they look like and how big are they? They're pretty small. Um, they're more, like I said, they're more like the leprechaun, so they're smaller in size. Um, but I'm, I've never seen one myself, but there's been many depictions about them. Uh, but there, I would say they're probably no more than two, maybe two and a half, uh, you know, feet tall. Hmm. So yeah, they're pretty tiny in that aspect. 
do, but do they you know, have, you see the remnants of what they've done. Let's put it that way. What do people think when they come upon these remnants? Or do they recognize them for what it is, or they just don't? They just well, in in Hawaii, you know, it's very superstitious. We're all very superstitious, but we believe. So let's say you go to an area, and then they find a new place, or let's say, oh, this is the great one. The, they they had the highways that they were building. And they kept having to redo or reroute this one they called the H3 phase. And it took, I don't know, like 20 something years because they kept finding, you know, either uh, archaeological sites or something that you couldn't destroy or, you know, build over. So it's once you see it, you're respectful and you, you know, you just, you do an offering or whatever and you, and you, and you move on. But it's people who don't know about it. And then they get into trouble because they're like, okay, well, you guys didn't pay attention or you didn't do an offering. So now we're going to mess with you. Yeah. But it's been yeah. very respected. And if you find something, real, oh, back up. Don't go that way. And is it built to scale? Like, you know, like tiny? Um, It depends. I mean, they built big walls too, you know, big buildings. But then the ones that we've, that I've seen myself, it's just a very small dam with the water's running through and it's gone through this. Um, they cut a hole into the mountain as it was going through. So it's probably no taller than maybe six feet tall into the highest point, but it's the, it's the little dam, the waterway that goes through it. That's amazing because it goes on for miles. Do they have the same kind of abilities as the Sasquatch people? You know, a part I don't know. I, you know, said I've never seen them myself. I just knew we just stayed away because we did not want them to mess. We didn't want to mess with them. But it's different now that I'm thinking about it. Going, oh, I could have had more um, conversations. But you could feel their presence, like you would, you know, when we go into the forest in Hawaii. You can feel their presence as well. So those were just you know, there were many others, but that was the ones that most people experienced. How does that? How does that presence feel? Because I mean, you know, I felt we we felt the presence of the Sasquatch people, and sometimes it's so powerful that it'll bring you to tears. The love and the, uh, the purity of the love and whatever is it similar to their kind of energy or presence, or is it a little distinctive it's to them? Like, or? It's more like you've got a little kid, a mischievous kid that you can feel their presence. You know, it's, <laughs> it, that's the kind of feeling. It's it's not that um, like when I, when I feel them in my. Uh, when I feel the Sasquatch in my presence, I, it's like that feeling of that unconditional love and just feeling like you're safe, you know, whereas with the many honeys, it was more of a, okay, you know, it's like a giddy, fun, let's, let's have, let's enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> so they are quite mischievous then, like you said, yes, they yeah, are. that's cool, mm -hmm. that's cool. And what about, tell us a little bit about, have you seen the Sasquatch people in, in Hawaii? No, no, I did not see it, but I don't think I really paid attention because in my mind that they weren't present there because, you know, back in the day, oh, they're in California. <laughs> they're not in Hawaii. So I didn't even really uh, think about it. No, sorry, my husband's in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's fine. So how did you come to realize that they were there? I mean, I mean, you know, I think as we've uh, grown in our understanding and then we realize that they're pretty much everywhere. But right. uh, is that is that why you know that they're there, or is there? Mm -hmm. do, do, or have you heard stories of them there? And well, like I said, or, there were stories before the the tall giants and stuff. But we, I just assumed they were very giant native you know, native Hawaiians. But now that I go back, and you know, you can sense a different energy. Like, oh, so you're here too. And like your wife was saying, was it? Are they here visiting with me, or is it the local people? You know, the local ones. And so. It was kind of hard, but I knew they were that there was a presence there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, like you said, the ones that my wife uh, experienced were were ones that that uh, were just uh, traveling with her or showing up to show their support. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So are your are your are your uh, Sasquatch people talking to you right so now, or they've been uh, well, not at the moment, but they've been kind of busy the last I would say three months they've just been saying when are you coming out to visit us when are you you know we're waiting oh come on out come and visit so I've been feeling 
the need to just go out and take a hike or uh, you know go out for a picnic or something just to be reconnecting and it's funny because yeah. our group here they they started feeling the same way i said i think they're calling us and like i said the rock that i received from them was another sign saying see we're telling you we are here so now you got to come out and play yeah it's funny you know i feel i feel my maybe uh it's just a different phase of my relationship with them but i seem to feel them more when I'm at home now and when I'm on the show than I do in the woods, it's been, it's been actually pretty quiet in the woods lately. And I think, I think in my case, sometimes they want to get your attention and, and get you drawn in so that, so that you uh, become invested in it. And then, you know, the teaching or whatever starts, but once you're well initiated into that education, then it, they don't have to interact with, with me at least as much in the woods as they used to. What are, you, what are you feeling on that? Well, they work with me um, in my healing practice at the office that we're in. Um, they're there a lot. Course. And in fact, what was interesting is uh, um, this friend of mine, she started to, she just said, I've just started to get connected with the Sasquatch. And I says, they're here, you know, they're in our, in our place. And so what was interesting is that she came back, she, she found some hair. And then she says, Okay, of all places, it was just in her pathway as she was, you know, going to leave the building. And I just laughed, she, so she showed it to me. And I felt it, and my hand felt a little buzzy. And I said, interesting. Then I took out the one that I had, and it looked very similar to the one that I had. So I said, there's your proof. And she sat there going, wow. I'm, um, you know, I feel so blessed to do this, to, to receive that. And then, you know, I get a couple of days later, she went for a walk. She goes, well, I found this other piece when I was walking into this meadow area. Um, she goes, and it's a pretty big piece. And she showed it to me. I said, well, I guess now, you know, because you've been asking for proof. So now you got it. So they are working awesome. with us and they work with us wherever we are most comfortable or, and like right now with the weather being as bad and with I had my ankle surgery I really couldn't go out much but I got the come on let's go out and play um but Garrett and I both were able to receive some hair and you know a lot of different gifts in the off in our offices which were thinking really you know like who, who knew that but they would leave all kinds of stuff and it was it was so amazing it's interesting you said uh, about they 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 um, help you with your healing practice or whatever because uh, they've been working with me with that as well and I haven't really been kind of been I haven't been doing much lately with it which is probably they they probably would like me to do more but but uh, but they're definitely involved in that and they uh, they're they're amazing healers yes as you know yeah hey I Mr feel Beans so <laughs> hey everybody hello. <laughs> We're honored to, to welcome the world's handsomest man to the show, Frank <laughs> Oliver Beans. So, so they want you to go out into the woods and visit them. I guess, you know, I guess they do like it when you go and visit them in their actual home. And I don't think these are the ones that I normally work with. It's like um, most of my experiences were in New Mexico and Washington State. And so yeah. it's more like, okay, Gail, well, you don't have to go there. You know, we're right outside in your own neighborhood. Just come on out. And I've been running into a lot of people here that says, Gail, I think I found this place and I feel like they're there. And I said, so how's it feel to you? And so they explained it. I said, then that's them. I says, really? I said, what else would it be? And I said, I don't know. And I said, feel from your heart. What does it feel like? And this one guy in particular, he's gone up and, you know, he said he's getting a little older. He can't really do his mountain bikes as well. So he got an electric bike. <laughs> so he was, yeah. I can go further. And he said that um, when he was, we would go to the same spots and there would be um, like natural quartz, you know, like not the clear quartz, but natural quartz or rose quartz or something left behind or some um, interesting pine cones and things that comes in a nice arrangement 
as if they're waiting for him. And I said, because they are. And so he's given me a couple of things that were left for him and it's supercharged. That's a really nice. I says, well, there you go. He goes, it's not where everyone can see them. It's kind of off the beaten path. I said, great. That's your spot, your place to connect. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, I, uh, I I have a lot of crystals and whatever, too. Sometimes I was using them in, when I was doing the healing or whatever. One time uh, I was out with a lady called Mary. The people who have uh, seen my YouTube channel know who she is. She's quite a gifted lady. She was actually teaching me about the healing and whatever. One time we went out there and we, we put a bunch of crystals on a native drum. Mm hmm and just just right out in the middle of the forest and uh we asked uh Raja say who is my the female uh daughter of uh, our re if she would charge them up you know because they can charge up your crystals and stuff mm -hmm. right and and she was she is particularly very interested in crystals and i and i no word of a lie we were standing there in the middle of the forest the drum started vibrating and shaking and we could we could we we, we could see it and hear it and and it was just like, wow, she's doing it. Yes. And uh well, and you I asked. just got <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I just got a big buzz of confirmation when I said yeah. that. But mm -hmm. but yeah, they're um they're very much into the healing and uh, some of them are into crystals and well, I mean, because crystals have a lot of power too, right? Mm hmm Well, we were gifted with um wood. So it's um cedar, and it's from a tree stump that was struck by lightning. And I call it gifted because um, he was nine at the time. He found this stump on his own. Well, a nine-year-old with a hatchet and goes off. We're all looking for firewood. So, you know, you never know what he's going to get. But he came back with his um, bath towel full of these wood shards. And he said that the Sasquatch said to use it. And I'm thinking, oh, that's the kindling for the fire. Great. He goes, no. So he told us how to use it and that the wood, you can take the wood, piece of wood, and draw a box. And you stand in that box and it helps to release all the negative things, your aches and pains, things like that. And so we're like, okay, well, let's try it out. And let me tell you, it was amazing. So it's yeah. through this child who had no fear at all. He's the one who taught us or shared us, shared with us a gift. And ever since then, they've really been part of my healing practice. And I've worked with them as well. So it's, yeah. It is amazing. I just realized I haven't recorded this, but I mean, I can, I can also pull it off of my uh, Facebook thing, but maybe, maybe I'll start recording and uh, okay. there's a little bit better quality. But I can still, I, I won't lose any of it. Mm. I won't lose any of it. I'll just uh, splice it together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when so, you do it, when you do it like this, it'll give you the full recording. Because whenever you're Facebook Live, it's it'll um, it it records all of that. So yeah, you're not gonna yeah. lose anything. Oh, and it'll record the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, just from when I press record now, it's going to record everything I didn't have even before I. From whenever you started Facebook Live, I think that's the way it goes. Yeah, well, either way, I'll figure it out. <laughs> so, how you been, Mister Beans? I'm doing okay. I like your little, your little, your stories and adventures with the Sasquatch people. It's just so, so beautiful. I, I, I was wondering today. I wonder how many people are actually have that kind of a friendship friendship relationship with the sasquatch people uh into, just from my experience it doesn't seem like there's more than a couple of thousand maybe right. but uh but it could be uh but i could be way off because you know people who are having friendship experiences may not be talking about it much it's sort of like how, knowing sasquatch is a little bit like having a gold gold mine you don't really go around telling everybody that you got a gold mine mm -hmm. And then where it is, you know, so. Yep. Yeah. It's your well, own little I, secret. Well, you know what, though? I think that I think that more people would have the opportunity to have this. But I think it's something about it is it's kind of like how two people will interpret the exact same experience. 
if, if somebody's open hearted and open to it, uh, a, an experience like a rock coming out on the path will be, hello, my friends are here. Somebody else will think, oh, my God, they're going to kill me. So a lot of people may be presented with this opportunity, but their interpretation of it prevents them from taking it to, you know, to place where, where we have. Right. You know, I, I think that, that there's some truth to that for sure. I think, I think the opportunity has been presented to a number of people and, and only a few or a, or a certain amount will, will act upon it. Do you think that's true? I, that's what I, I really do believe that's true. Well, that's what happened in my first experience. There were eight of us there and two were right behind me, but they were having their own conversation. And I was just looking down off of this logging road and I was like, what's that? You know, I'm just, it's just this very tall, very black hair, not fur, hair. And it was like, it's like silky, silky, well-maintained. And it was very narrow. And I'm just standing there, not sure what I'm seeing. So Garrett was with me. We're actually, um, he took us there and I'm trying to get his attention and he's not hearing. So I, finally I turn around to tell him and I go back and it's gone. <laughs> so, you know, they said, well, what did you see? I said, I don't, I don't know what I saw. They said, you know what you said? I don't know what I saw. I said, maybe it was another person. They're like, there's nobody here. A raven? You know, I just couldn't figure it out. But later on, um, when we went back, because we were just leaving that time. So that was, I think, in July. And we went back at the beginning, I think it was either the end of September or beginning of October. And we only could stay there a couple of days because we were we were actually, um, we went for another reason. And we went back to visit the place that I saw it and I was shocked. And we then connected with this, this she is like in all aspects, uh, she came through a portal. And so she explained more about who she was and she's more of the star, star being visitors that came through. But she said that there was a local tribe that was there. And I'm just like, I was in shock going, I knew I saw something and I knew it was pretty tall, but didn't look like the other pictures that I seen on TV, you know, <laughs> it was, it was nothing that, and the beautiful black hair, not for her, very well maintained. So I just thought, I don't, I, I have no idea what that was. But then when I saw them in Washington state, at one point there were seven of us. So then, you know, then I had, well, now everybody saw them, but yet I was the only one who's receiving the telepathic messages which I never understood why my ear is buzzing. So they're, they're starting to come in. <laughs> <laughs> so when, tell us a little bit about portals. So that they can come from any, any other dimension or any other kind of place through the portal. How does that, how does that work? So the, the first time I really, we put it to a test um, we met some people from Australia, and they told, told us about the Duliga there. You know, you got the Yahweh's, but more in particular, he worked with the Duliga. And then he told us about, you know, they, they will come to your place in Colorado. You just need to open a portal. I was like, well, that's easier said than done. And as I was um, just looking at it, and I mean, I saw these two trees in the little courtyard. I said perfect spot for the portal. And then these words came out of my mouth that I knew it was to open the portal. And we felt like this, like that energy shift, you know, you can just feel like there's something buzzing and we're like, I think they're here. And we had a class that evening. So the classrooms, you know, the, the courtyard's there and then the window is right there. And then we have the classroom and people who didn't know anything about what we did they're just like, there's something out there. Like they're watching. And I said, yeah, well, we kind of opened a portal. Um, and then at that time, 
uh, Garrett was doing the channeling and he and it was them and they explained to us what we're doing and what and that they really liked being able to come and see us so you know from Australia they came to visit us in Colorado and things that were being channeled were things that none of us knew and then and, you know then after that I talked to my well message my friend in Australia going this is what happened and this is what they said they said that's what they do here and I just thought that's fascinating. So somehow, some way, I received the words to open the portal. And that was a couple of weeks later. I got a, I got the message to how to close the portal. <laughs> so it was it was amazing. So they they travel, you know, whichever way they they wish to. Whether they show up uh, in the physical form, whether they're um, you know they're cloaked. Or is it the spiritual? I call it spiritual, but they're probably cloaked because I can't see them, but I can sense them. Right. So you when, know, when that, I, that 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 what you just said, uh, I experienced a lot is that they, they don't have to be cloaked if they're just standing inside the other dimension. They could be close to you six inches and you wouldn't see them. Mm -hmm. And you may not necessarily feel them, but you'll feel an energy. Yep. Yeah. And front, it's like that's to me that that's what they say is uh, they say we like to live in no space, no space, and uh, that's a pretty amazing thing to live in no space because there is no space in there and there's no time. Right. There's and, that. and so so it's like not a matter of a, a, a portal would really be a matter for the in no space, it's just setting an intention or putting up a little, hi, I'm over here, mm -hmm. and they can come. Yeah. 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 Because when I reappeared when I okay. reappeared in my room, sorry, I don't think he came through a portal. I I just think that he projected the thought that he wanted to be there and there he was. Mm -hmm. Um so uh I guess there's different modes that they can travel or whatever. Maybe some of them are more evolved than others or or but there, there's different there's different things going on, that's for sure. Well we, sometimes when we get the energy, we sense the energy. There may be creaking noises or something, you know, something physical going on that correlates the same time we're sensing it. So it's like, well, there you go. You wanted your proof. <laughs> that was them. Yeah. What were some of the good? What were some of the confirmations that you experienced over uh, over your your uh, journey with them? I know that that rock that you just said you were gifted was one. You want to talk about some of the significant ones? So initially, um, when I went down the path of the medicine woman or the shaman, um, a female Sasquatch came to me. And so I found out, so there was a male that was present and he, I don't know if he came in because of what we talked about, because we, after a while we started doing some classes and Garrett started doing a lot of classes where we were even talking different languages like healing words and things like that that he was receiving and so through that I met my first guide Naayashan and he to me was like a bouncer he <laughs> kind of like you know he was he protected this side of the portal or this side of the door so nothing bad can come out and you know and if anything needs to go he would he would be there to let them go in so when I decided I said you know what I really want to walk the path of the shaman. And so I reached out to the, you know, to them and I said, I would really like your help. And so that evening I did a journey. Um, I love to journey when I'm in the tub. It's like nobody bothers me. But in that journey, this female came up and she was showing me these different plants. I felt like it was either Oregon or Washington State, that kind of energy. At least that's the energy that I got. But she had shown me her children, and there were three of them. And at that time, we just had adopted some um, some dog some dogs, and the female, for some reason, she jumped and she she um, I don't know if it was her hip or some that bone in there. It she basically broke it, so she had to be in a cast. So she was maybe ten weeks old. She was in a cast for like three months. So majority of you know poor thing and so I saw her with the with her kids and she was jumping around and she said that she wanted 
or at least I felt she was asking for my dog in return for my teachings. And I remember going, no, I can't give you that. She's my baby. I can't give you my dog. So I, I really thought it was odd, you know? So I kind of struggled with that. Going, oh, okay, um, not sure what I want to do with this. Then I asked Garrett and Garrett told me the story about, oh, on the res, there's a lot of people who the res dogs know about the Sasquatch there because they play with them or they'll bring them food or something. So here I am going, oh, I did ask, but my kids, you know, they, they, they need these puppies, you know, and then, then later on when I journeyed again, she said, that's not what she was showing me. So I misinterpreted what she was trying to show me is that my dog will be healed and she'll be able to run and play. What she was trying, she's saying she wanted her was to show me that I could help with the healing for that dog. I'm like, oh, I really missed the boat on that one. But that's how it began, you know, and then she would show me things or certain plants would come into my mind, so, you know, got this thing going on, looking for the type of plants or, you know, herbs to use in this. And then I see a vision in my head and not necessarily the name of it, but kind of like figuring out where it is. And I'll look in a book and there it goes. And it's exactly what I needed. So she's been working with me through, through that um, type of um, connection. And she does tend to um, take part when I'm making some sprays or something. And she'll tell me what else to put in it. Or if I'm making some salves or tinctures, I get her, I can feel her presence. It's a different feeling than when Naaya Sean is with me. So her name is uh, Kekshikta. And I, you know, it's like, you don't even have to turn around to know who it is behind you when it's someone you, you know, you just have that close relationship. That's what I feel with them. So it's as if when I'm, if I'm cooking and my grandmother, you know, shows up type of thing, I just have a sense of knowing. So that's how they work with me. So it's more on the spiritual side, but they will give me clues or even like a certain scent. I'm like, okay, this herb, it smells like whatever. And I'll talk to other people. And then I find it going, wow. Because the name that she probably would have called it is not the name that it, that what I would find in a book, but it she just showed me what it looks like, what it smells like, and that's how I find out. It makes sense that they would be using herbs and, and free healings and whatever. Uh, I was wondering, could you ask your, I, I've had an experience, maybe you can give me an answer with this. Okay. Um, I was in the woods with my friend, Randy Brisson, and... Uh, we were way deep in the woods and we were eat, I think we, we were eating something and we, we felt them around and whatever. We knew they were there, but I remember putting something back in my, in my backpack. And then on my way out, I decided I was going to, to throw some garbage away. So I opened up the backpack and uh, on the very top were some, were some herbs that they, that the Sasquatch had put in there. And I know, you know, it was impossible for it to have been in there because I, I had put the food mm -hmm. was on the top. So they added some kind of herbs and I was always wondering what they were, yep. what, what, what the purpose of them was. Uh, um, they, were, they were trying to tell me something, uh, some healing properties with it or something. And I've actually got pictures of them somewhere, but do they, they, they have any insight into that? It had to do with um, helping with inflammation. This person, wow. that would, yeah, does this make sense? It's like, I don't know if there was a person with you or something, but the, it was okay with the walk, but it was later and going, okay, now I'm kind of hurting. So that's, I believe that the, the herb that they left you was for inflammation and for you as a healer to be able to use it. But it's like, wow. but they forgot to put the little note that explained what it did. <laughs> yeah. And to, yeah, I wish I had of, uh, yeah, I, I should have really looked into it a lot, a lot deeper. I, I mean, I, I knew it was something like that, but, uh, but I just, I just found it incredible that they, you know, <laughs> that they put it right on top. And uh, well, especially when you know, like, I know that wasn't me. So then, you know, it's from them, but we don't know well, of course, of why, course. right? Well, well, what is it for? Yeah. And all I would say was, thank you. But they're like, no, you got to do something with it. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. 
And uh, yeah, and uh, it was funny because when I was emptying the garbage out too, of course the ravens were flying right overhead and watching. So they were they were they were observing what I was doing through the eyes of the raven, or they were shape shifted mm -hmm. into them. But right, uh, right. yeah, I, I often wonder what the story behind that was. But I mean, I, you know, I'm not not uh, that dense that I didn't know that it had something to do with some kind of healing and healing with herbs and whatever. I just didn't know mm -hmm. what specifically. But that's what they're saying, eh? Mm -hmm. Inflammation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So what? Did, so you guys are with you right now? Mm -hmm. They've kind of been with me for the last, um, very close with me, like almost every day, because I've been having some health issues. And one of the biggest um, messages I got through someone else was, Gail, you're not asking for help. And I stopped. I said, you're right. I know that they help me when I help others, but I haven't asked them to help me. And it was shocking because I'm like, I wonder why. It's not that I don't believe in it because I totally believe in what they do, but I think it's more my stubbornness is what they told me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they've been yeah. with me a lot more and um, conscientious of helping me through all that I'm going through and not just to support, but also giving me some insights, you know, like oh, this medication, I don't know if that's going to really work or something. Cause you know, my, I'm not sure it's my logical brain, the ego looking at it, or is it them telling me? So it's almost like, could you repeat that several times so that I do understand what you're saying and what you're meaning? And then I'll do some research on it, but, oh, I got it. Yeah. You know, I, I think, uh, I know that they heal people. Mm -hmm. I've seen them. I, I, I have friends who have been healed. I've, I've seen it myself, you know, especially at a, one of the gatherings that I hosted. Uh, there was a healing right in front of a group of us. But I think that in some ways, when they're teaching you how to heal, when you have the ability as a healer, they, they would prefer that you do it. They want you to, they want you to walk on your own two feet. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, that, that's been my experience because uh and but but they but they're there with you watching and observing right. guiding they're the teachers assist, assisting assisting right. stuff of teachers, that nature but they want us to have the confidence especially with me too to have the confidence in our own abilities that it's not that they're doing the healings that we're doing it as well yeah so how, when did you uh realize that you were in a because obviously you are in a, in a teacher student relationship with them. When did you start realizing, realizing that was the dynamic between you? Well, it's been not just the, you know, not just the people of the forest, but the, even the spirit animals, all these the different ones. And they would come in and I could feel it in the teacher role, but they've been, I'd say within the last two years, or maybe three, um, they've been pushing me to say, you're the teacher now. I was like, well, but I still need to learn new stuff. They said, of course, but you're in the teacher role. So there are things that they want me to continue to do and, and, and expand on what they've taught me. And what I find it that's very fascinating is I'm a very logical person. I need to, you know, like you say, okay, we're going to start using some tuning forks. For some reason, tuning forks keep coming in. I said, I've never really used them. So I end up finding it so funny in my Amazon feed, these two particular tuning forks with a certain frequency kept popping up. I'm going, well, I didn't look for tuning forks before. So the, the logic behind it showing up is I have no clue. So I got it. And then I found out my friend, um, she's my first boss in Colorado. She ended up, she had lung cancer and she wasn't a smoker. And she called and asked me for help. So I freaked out, you know, she's one of my oldest friends here. and just going, I, I, I don't know if I'm good enough. But through their guide, we use the tuning forks and the frequencies to get into those areas that, you know, to, to enhance the healing that I was doing as well. And so I said, 
okay, well, maybe I should study up more, you know, go read books about this. And so I'm trying to find the right books going, oh, you know, that's too expensive. Or, you know, then I just heard, don't you trust us? And I stopped. Mm -hmm. I was like, I do. So then I let it go. And then I let them guide me. And then I taught that to others. And it's amazing. And I just, they're like, oh, how did you do? I said, I didn't know that. But they showed me in my mind what it's for. And I could feel the resonance. And that's how it goes. So they put me that's in the beautiful. role of teacher as well as student. Pretty much in the same time. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, I, you know, I've, I, it, I've known for a while that if one clan knows you because, the, because of their telepathic nature, uh, if, if you're known to one clan and adopted or family to one clan, that they will all know you. Um, now there are, there, there are people too. Some of them are not as friendly as others, uh -huh. but I think that if you have a relationship with one clan, there'll be some kind of respect there, or at least an acknowledgement. And I'm sure that when you've been traveling, you've been greeted by many different clans like I have and whatever. And uh, it, it's because of that telepathic network or. It's, it's really amazing. Um, when we were driving from Colorado to Washington uh, to go to that psychic Sas Sasquatch conference, um, the energies around us, we could just sense it because we opened up before we had gone there. And it was Kiwoni Laparitis. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. And he's the one who um, introduced the connection to myself and Garrett. But Garrett in particular brought it to the rest of our group. And then when we went to uh, Washington, we were already open to that and had been, you know, had the experiences of connecting, connecting with them at the psychic level, which was amazing. So as we drove, I could sense and the difference in the energies and difference in the groups. And when we got to this place, it was a gathering, not just of, you know, of us humans, but of them as well. And so there were these different groups that were there and it was so amazing. Like I keep wanting to go back to that location to experience it. And every time I've gone, I've had a great experience, but then I got the message that you don't have to go there to connect with us, you know, like you can go to your, you know, go to your backyard or go to, you know, a, a, you know, a nice place near where you live and, and we're here. Or just so go that, into your heart or, yeah. right? Well, they're you always there. Yeah, the, I feel I find it easier to connect with them there, but it's to connect with the more, the physical. I haven't quite um, gotten past that one yet. I've had several experiences, but not where, I've stood right in front of them and they came out of the dark, you know, of the shadows. I think I was a little bit um, too afraid of that, but I could feel them just as much as I feel them spiritually. And that's how I would know that they were there to begin with. How are you? How are you there? How are you now? Would you be like, I think that, I think that, well, I know that at where I am now, I would, I'd be fine with them walking right up to me face to face. I, mm -hmm. Are you at that? Are you, uh, are you comfortable like that? I, would you? I think I am. But, you know, we got that fight or flight. So I may run and I'll come back and say, I apologize. <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is my, my knee-jerk reaction. I'm okay now. <laughs> but, yeah, it's it's more of, um because I had the opportunity in Washington State to go into the forest when they were there. And my body would not move. My legs locked and I couldn't move. And, you know, and but I knew, I said, okay, I know I can feel the love and the caring and the nurturing and that no harm would come to me, but my body just would not respond. And it was so funny because of like, why Gil, you're actually connecting, you're telepathically speaking. I said, I don't know why, I said, but my body just won't, my feet wouldn't move. So it could have been that they're saying, now you're okay there, you know, baby steps. I think so. Yeah. I think that they probably didn't want you to, they probably thought this is enough for now. Yeah, because they, they were very tall. I mean, I'm, that's what shocked me the most. They were extremely tall. And I'm going, I didn't know you guys got that big. <laughs> People say <laughs> eight feet, nine feet. No, this is probably 15 feet more. And we could tell because of where their eyes were 
in relation to the trees. So that's probably, you know, probably wouldn't have worked out well. And my some friends of ours, there are three of them, they went into the forest and on, on they were sitting on a down tree, so it was a log, and they were connecting, they're like, okay. And then they said they felt like it was a young one jumped on one end of the of the um the log and so it kind of shifted them and of course they screamed and then they felt like this this giggle and they all started laughing and then they're like okay well maybe we're not quite ready but that was funny you know after they calmed down <laughs> so yeah. i don't think you know i don't think people are ever truly ready because it's not necessarily when you're ready it's it has to be a relationship to be able to, to go through this. So my first experience, there was a guy who came, met us and he from Arkansas and he wanted to experience first, firsthand. So he would constantly go out, do all these things, nothing. And here was, I wasn't even looking and I saw one and I'm going, why me? I wasn't looking. Well, I did ask for proof, but I really, that's not what I was you know, looking for at the time. So it's very interesting when they choose to show themselves yeah. and who they choose to show themselves with. Yeah. And, you know, even as a group, we may not all be in the same place. I remember we were sitting around the fire. We talked about it going, okay, so what if one showed up right now? What would you do? And some people says, <laughs> oh, I go and hug up, hug with them. And I said, um, the verdict's still out. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. And I said, reality is, you don't know how you'd react. But then I know if when on this, that's why I think on the spiritual side, I can connect so well because they connect at the heart first. And I can feel that, that you know, that the loving, nurturing, caring. And so I don't have a problem. I think it's more of their physical size uh, would probably freak me out. But I saw the eye sign. I saw the outlines. We've heard them. So it's just a matter of them now walking forward and me staying in place. <laughs> I, I, I would say, uh, I would think and I would say, and I feel that to them meeting them, they would consider it to be more important for you to meet them on the heart level and the energy level than, the, than, than our human need to have them walk out face to face. I, yeah. I think that that's much more important to them uh that, that's the true that way yeah that's the that's the true that's the true connection and the true you know understanding between you and them what what, what are your what are your guides saying to that i guess they would confirm that I, I would think well they did they confirmed that um in washington state first you know i didn't quite see i could see the eye sign first i didn't even know what it was because it was just one eye first and i thought is there a motorcycle or something back there because i'm just seeing and it was <laughs> then all of a sudden I saw two and I knew it was an owl because the eyes were further apart. And then I started seeing the outline. So it was like a slow, slow way for me to get used to. And then she started talking to me telepathically. So that was such an amazing experience. So then the next time we went up, I mean, this may sound silly, but everybody's seeing the starships. There's so many because there's no light pollution. We could see them so clearly. And my neck started hurting and going, I can't be tired looking up. And so I just sat there go, I wonder if she's here. And then, you know, like probably 20 feet away, up in the, I mean, I could see her eyes up in the trees again. And I'm going, she's here. And then my friend was behind me and I turned around. He goes, I see her sister. And he saw her before. So that's the validation to me. Because all I did was think, oh, I wonder if she's here. And she was there and she connected. Yeah. And I was okay. I didn't freak out. Nothing. And I said, I wonder if I could have gone to see her at that time. I think I would have. But there were just too many people. I'm like, no, you know, it's not something that I want a mass of people to experience. Because if she did want that, she would have just stepped out of the forest. You know? Do you think some of those thoughts that she's here, or I wonder if, it, if it's like this, or, I, or when you have a question, do you think sometimes that they're thought placements? Because so many times when you when you think that or, or whatever, the answer is like immediate. 
Mm-hmm. I, I yes, believe that absolutely. sometimes there, I've just got a big, big, big surge of energy confidence because I know that's my experience. So yeah, they will put the thought in your head and then show you the the answer right away, right? Yep. They will sometimes before I even put the sentence together, I already got the answer. Exactly. And that's when I learned how to, I said, oh, okay. So that's how I get messages. Because I don't stop to think, what's the process of getting the message? Do I have to call them in? Do I have to? No, nope, they just pop in. They're there. And so, well, how did you yeah. know that? I said, because, and I can feel the energies of the ind- individual being that's conveying the message. So it's not just the people of force, it's any of them in particular or as a group, they just come in and that's how they communicate with me. And that's yeah. when I know, I said, well, first of all, I would never say it that way, number one. Right. <laughs> then number two, sometimes the concepts are like, wow, I, I never would have even thought of that. Well, that's because you didn't, Gail. You got the misses coming in. Yeah, that and the fact that when it happens over and over and over again and you get the thought and then the answer immediately mm-hmm. that's you know that's pretty compelling too so the word is ask, trust trust yeah. what you're receiving is true what would your sasquatch guides t- t- uh, say about uh their abilities to shape shift and or see through the eyes of animals oh do, yeah do they want to do they want to talk about that at all can they do, can they do they want to give us some more they details sh- about that They've shown that to me. Um, yeah. They've, um, and it's, and I've seen it. Um, we were in Washington State. It was during the day. And I sensed this presence. Uh, it felt like them. And then all of a sudden we saw, um, I'm going to call it a sea eagle because it's not a bald eagle. It was a little bit different looking. Um, and it just popped right out of there and came in. And I said, I know that's not what I sensed because I can sense birds differently. So I knew that that bird was a shape-shifted form of the being that was there communicating, you know, and that I could sense. I've seen a lot of times they show up as ravens. Yes. I'm like, okay, well, there's my validation. There you go. Bingo. Where are you doing? Why are you here, raven? Well, because it's not the raven. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes the raven will give you an answer with a call when you have one of those thoughts too, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And I've also had personal glyph messages, mm-hmm. really, uh, really personal ones that I've been looking at. And then I look over and there's the ravens looking right at me, like cock of their head, watching like to see that I see it. And then I, uh-huh. and I also get the connection between uh, that they're there as shapeshifters or seeing through the eyes and, and that kind of thing. And I just got another big energy, energy confirmation on that. So, so the more we work with them, like you're saying, we don't have to do the beginner stuff that we used to do. And, you know, like leaving them gifts and things like that. We don't do it as a necessity. We do it more as, um, hey, guys, we're here. Have a party, you know, versus saying, oh, I want them to come in and connect with us. So it's it's a really, it's evolved over the times. And it, it could be a couple of years since, uh, you know, we've seen them. Like during the pandemic, it was hard for us to travel. But they're there. Same place, may not be all of the ones that we met before, but I knew there was a local tribe and I felt the presence there. And I, but I also felt the lack of others um, because at the time we went there, it was like a gathering. So it's, it's interesting, but it's, it's just amazing. And I will get simple messages. We're walking through the forest and I'm looking down to find if I see if I can find any footprints. And then I hear, look up look up so i'm looking up i'm going oh there's a you know chipmunk what am i looking at the message was we shouldn't be looking down we should be looking up because they're in the trees and i was like oh duh (laughs) so little things but that's how they communicate and they don't have they don't speak in long sentences either sometimes it's just a simple emotion or simple words and I get the message. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Did you want to, when did you want to share some pictures? I mean, we don't, yeah, we, can, we, can, we can keep going. Yeah, we can share the pictures. Um, it, you know, it's not a very long one. I told you. Um, let me do my share screen. 
and see if this comes in. All right. Let's go to the beginning. That's always a good place to start. Yep. Yeah. Yep, it always helps. So can you see it on the screen? Absolutely. Okay. So people say they leave gifts. Someone even asked, why do you call it offerings? Um, we started that way as an offering saying like, thank you for, um, you know, guiding us here. So we, in turn, we were, we were providing you this. So we called it offerings. It's, but it's the same thing. Um, so the first times we did it, we, there was a bowl and we put all these strawberries and cherries and all of these fruits, all the good stuff, um, you know, and, and the corn, especially. Um, <laughs> there's a couple of us in the group going, I, I want to eat the corn. Why are we only leave, giving it to them? Can't we leave some for ourselves? You know, but <laughs> we were all excited, you know, it's like, oh. And so another time we went up there and the stump that we would normally use it was, um, it was, um, what do you call it? We, we, we started picking the wood from that, you know, we asked first, so then that got smaller. So we came up with this great uh, larger stump and we just took the other, you know, wood around it to kind of create a bowl because that was all kinds of like popcorn and, you know, snacks, things that, so we kind of made up our own little um, container for it. So we've had fun and we've, we've left them and, We've seen the changes, like this one guy, he would go back every hour, every hour. I said, stop it. Let them come out and take it when they want to. You know, you don't really need the proof. You, they'll show you. Don't worry about it. So I, the next one I have. So the picture. Um, this picture here with the, the smaller picture. That's how we set it up originally. And then the next day, we went back and everything looked pretty similar, except there's a stack of cookies missing. It's these striped cookies. Yeah. What's interesting is that when we were heading out for the trip, I was just told, we like those striped uh, cookies. I was like, Okay, you like them, I'll buy them, you know, so we bought that and um, that was the only that was the only stack that was taken that time. And it was just funny because, you know, people said, well, that's all these junks, you know, why are you giving them junk? I says, well, you know, they got all the healthy stuff. They don't get the junks very often. So we went ahead and did it. But what's unusual is the way it was taken. You kind of have to be tall to be able to reach down in and then pull it out without knocking everything else over. Right. Looks like so, looks like they looks like they took some bananas too, and they also reversed them mm -hmm. the way they're. Yep. Is that is, is that true? Yep, they did. I didn't even realize it till now that you said it. Yeah, because that they're in in the original picture. Mm -hmm. You can't see my pointer, can you? Or can you? No, I can't see your pointer. Well, but maybe in the original. Yeah. Go ahead. In the original picture, there. Oh, you can see it. I think so. It's like it looks like a V. Yeah, in the original picture, they're, they're going facing. down at uh, going down from like at a different angle than they are in in the uh, in the next day picture. And plus, there's quite a few less. Right. Well, it could be that, or it could have been we moved it. You know, people. You know, when you get too many women, they fuss. They fuss with things. <laughs> Move it around. Oh, but, okay. Okay. But I do know that that the, the cookies were missing. Because I said, out of all of them, and then I told him, I said, because that's what I was told to to bring. One year, it was Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. <laughs> I was like, okay, we'll do this. Uh, everybody likes those. I know. <laughs> Come on. Uh, <laughs> everybody okay. likes those. But, the, but, the, but the, the, the funny point is, is that they do have their own preferences. And this from clan to clan or, or, or individual to individual, too. Like Absolutely. Yeah. So this is a portal. So like in the picture where there's a person crawling underneath it, we're being told you need to crawl underneath it to go through this portal. And you do feel like you're going into a different area. I mean, although physically you can see the person, but there's an energetic shift. So the center picture is showing where Garrett's taking a look at it, like, what is that? And so he, um, you know, I said, hold it up. It's like the skull of some kind of 
I don't know if it's a chipmunk or something, but it's was put on this stick. It's you know, it was like interesting. Why would they leave that for us? You know, and it was left there purposely. It's not like, oh, there's a skeleton. It was purposely left there because we had come the day before and took it and we didn't find it. So that was like, okay, I don't know what that is, but okay, this is a neat one. So interesting, interesting gift that they left us right by the portal. Yeah. Um, okay, so remember I talked about how tall it, it, this, this thing that I saw, this being. So I, you know, it, it wasn't, everyone we left after that, I was just kind of freaked out. I have no idea what I saw. So I sent Garrett, because he happened to be the tallest of all the rest of us, um, to go down to the tree. And I said, okay, now put your hand up. And even then, I, it was much taller than him. So I think he's like 5'10 or something. So maybe, maybe seven foot, maybe more. But I was kind of looked from on top looking down. So I really that don't was, know the true that, height. Does that make no, sense? That was, that, that's closer to nine feet there. Nine feet? Okay. Yeah, I was going to say eight or nine. Yeah. I, I, I know right. it was it was tall, but I just couldn't figure out what the heck I was looking at because it was from the back. I didn't see any face either. How, how about that, how, was it uh, peeking around behind the tree or was it standing directly like where, where Garrett is? It was standing there, but back to us. How how broad was it in comparison to Garrett? Um, maybe just a little bit wider, but like I said, this isn't it was narrow. No shoulder, you know, wide, broad football shoulders. It was pretty narrow going down, but beautiful, beautiful hair. Like as if it was combed, you know, and just so silky. That's why I said, I have no idea what that is. Because it definitely doesn't look like any of the, the Sasquatch that I've seen pictures of. But that's because they said she was a star being that came forward. She was one from the stars who came to visit. A Sasquatch from the stars. Yes. And her name okay. was Kipadia. Well, I'm, gl I'm glad you said that. Not a lot of people know that there are actual star beings that are Sasquatch. And they're considered the most intelligent of all the star people. Right. They're the ones who still has the technology and can come back and forth, back and forth. One of the trips I took, um, I got a message that there are there are some who chose to just stay here. So over over the time, they kind of I want to say de-evolved where they don't you know, they're not working with the portals as much. They're not as um, I don't want to say intelligent because that would be rude, but they're not as um, techn you know, technology or tech savvy, if you want to say it that way. Um, yeah. But this one in particular, yeah, she was, it made sense. So where further down, like behind Garrett, there's a, there's actually a portal there. And so we walked in that portal and then it's, that's when he got all the messages about her. That's before I was willing to release and, and channel. <laughs> how do you guys, how do you guys determine where a portal is? Is it just an energy it's definitely an energy just... and also the plants, the, the plants around it are like twisted. Um, but one of them, the tree was growing along the ground. So you saw part of that arch, it even gone, went further. So it's, it's an unusual way that the plants um, grow, but you can definitely feel the energy. Yeah. Awesome. So that's how tall it was. And it's like, okay, well, <laughs> And that thing's tall to me because I'm just about five feet. So, <laughs> so Gail, have you met have you met uh, Arla before? Yes. Do you know who Arla is? Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, I was on just for a little bit the last time she was on, I believe. <laughs> I could be wrong. <laughs> well, I think you were. Yeah, actually, I think I was. Hey, good looking. How are you? Hey, doing? Arla. How you doing, Mama? <laughs> I'm good. I just got home. So, so they they can help us as well. So, um, as I mentioned, we were going up. We need to collect some cedar, um, you know that, uh, and some of the wood um, to bring back to Colorado because this is in New Mexico. And I remember telling telling Garrett, you know, we only got like a day and a half of this, and I don't know if we can do all of this. So on on the way there, I'm like Garrett, go ask them to to help us 
So I'm thinking, you know, you, you know, maybe they can help us bring some cedar or something so that it's, we don't have, you know, you can't really do both. So we arrived. So the, the lower picture is what the stump looked like when we left in July. When we got to the same location, these two pieces in the upper um, right corner were exactly where we were gonna put our tents. It looks like part of the picture's cut off. Can you make it a little smaller or is it is that how it, how it looks? That's kind of how it was set up, oops, yeah. But Okay, that's fine. So, so this is, these are pieces of the stump that's from the bottom. I know it's not the same angle, but we went back to the stump and there's parts of it missing. Mm. And so like the, the energy of the wood that was left for us is the same as this energy of the stump. And I laughed and I said, well, we did ask them to help us out. So we didn't have to collect the, the wood because it was already there for us. And, but I remember saying, I said, Garrett, did your parents know we were coming and they were going to, they left wood for us? He goes, no. And I said, well, I asked and there you go. So they did help us. They brought us the wood, which saved us time. Yeah. And we could tell, like I said, because the stump was a lot smaller than it was. And um, the Navajo do not work with any trees that were struck by lightning, actually any plants that were struck by lightning, unless it's for medicine purposes. So nobody would use a tree that was struck by lightning or a stump that was struck by lightning. For any no, 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 forgive me, but what was the purpose of the wood? What did you need the wood for? This is the wood that, that's the one I was telling you about that little boy told us how to draw a box to do the clearing. That's the wood. So it okay. is a, a cedar tree that a stump that was struck by lightning. So all right, that's awesome. What we use. Okay. Now, awesome. so as we go down this logging road, there's these two, and it's the same one, just just different times of day. I took the pictures. There's these very huge mounds. Um. First time I went there, you know, Garrett says, well, what do you think of this? What is it? And I said, you know, I don't know too much because I'm, I'm a city girl. I said, but it feels like these are burial mounds. And so what I got was this is an ancient, like these people were here a very long time ago. And I, I believe they were like the, <coughs> of the, the tribe that moved into that area. Uh, of the Sasquatch. I'm like, how did I know? I don't know. I just got this message. And what I got was one of them was a female and one was a male. The male was her son. So the female was actually the one who was, um, who brought the tribe there. So she was the leader. And then her son was was the one who kind of like took the leadership over from her while she was still alive. But they both died at the same time. And further on down, you see these smaller mounds. And I felt those were children, the young ones. Some illness came in and took them. Oh, how do so, they, uh, can I ask you, how do they determine the leader just on merit? Because I know that they don't, they're not, they're not like we are where we, you know, where we put men above women or any of that stupidity right. that we have. They, you know, they, they don't, they don't judge like that, but how, how do they, how, how do you feel that they determine who, who the leader is going to be? Um, I couldn't say how the first leader was. Um, oh, okay. I can. Um, it is earned. So proven leader. And then they would go down the family lineage until the point where there's like, well, you're not a leader. We need to find elsewhere. There's um, back in the day too. There was competition. There was you know, a physical fight or whatever to to become the leader. But leader doesn't mean you're the you know like a dictator. Leader no. means that you're there to make sure that the um, the tribe or the nation will survive. And so sometimes it's a woman. Woman. Sometimes it's a male. Yeah. I wanted, yeah, like I, I wanted. I wanted to say something about uh, those mounds. Mm -hmm. Is um, it's really hard to tell how old they are, 
<laughs> well, you see, you see on the top of the mounds that are closest to the camera, uh -huh. uh, that there's all kind of saplings that are growing. Now, the only way those mounds could be ancient is if somebody comes along once a year or so and pulls all those saplings out. Right. Because if they didn't, it would look like forest already. True. So these are maintained by somebody. That's true. We've That's put, yeah, we've put crystals and, um, you know, offerings. I, we even made these fern wreaths um, and we placed them on them. And we'll come back and most of the time they're there. Um, not exactly the way we left it, but they're there. Uh, except the wreath, the wreaths were, were left uh, exactly where we put them. Um, but like I said, you know, this is not something that Garrett's family would deal with. They don't want to have anything to do with that. It's like, don't freak me out. I got to go and bring the sheep and the cattle up there, you know. Bees made an interesting point on that. It almost seems like this if it's true that, 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 they, um, that they, you know, like it, when we bury people, we'll go and we'll put our, we'll, you know, um, weed, we'll, we'll put our little flowers there. We'll keep it in pristine and nice. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's maybe that's what's going on here is where they want to keep it, uh, you know, in in in, a, in nice shape or um, that's not really the right way to say it, but you know what I mean. Where they want right. to maintain it. And what's interesting yeah. is that um, for some reason I felt we were not supposed to walk in between. It just uh. didn't feel right, and I felt like they they were as if they were holding hands. Um, so I just never went to it because Garrett said, well, what are you picking up? And we picked up pretty much the same thing. And sometimes we've gone in and there's beautiful flowers growing, but other things have been, like you were saying, cleaned off. So when we leave things, like the sticks, I don't know where they came from, but we decided not to mess with the sticks because they might be you know, a marker or something. Well, just the fact that things are cleaned off and whatever alone says that it's something important. Something important, I mean. right. And yeah, I was, that's amazing. You know, people, well, did you dig it? Of course I'm not going to dig into it. I don't need proof. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not, and that's now, bad luck, so I'm not going to do it. I don't think, I, if, if you did, if you did that, I, I think your relationship with them would would yeah. suffer greatly. Yeah. If you, yeah. I was <laughs> like, no, 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 we just honor and we just move on. But if you go further down the path, there's this opening, and it looks like the trees, the way the trees are sitting, like that's where a, a group would come and meet, you know, like it's like a bigger area and you've got all these trees as if they're all set up so you can sit around and have a meeting. Every time I go there, I felt that that's what it was. But I did feel that there's some sickness that came through and killed a lot of the young ones. Off. Oh. So, all right. So the next would they be one, Would they be susceptible before you get on it? I guess they would be susceptible like when, when the white man came to uh, North America and did all those atrocities and whatever, mm -hmm. he also brought disease or whatever that, that the natives did not have immunity to. I, yep. I, I imagine that it would probably could have been something similar to that, right? Would, it felt that way, at, you know, and it made sense because um, they do live there and they drink the same waters and all of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, so this is um, same place. Uh, woke up the next morning and this person, they brought their RV up and they heard around two, three o'clock in the morning as if somebody was like banging on the, on the, on the side, all along the side of the, the RV. And my friend's husband gets up. He's like, well, who's that? Didn't find anything. Um, then my other friend, they had a, their car and they had these prints on their car. <laughs> you can see the difference between the human hand, which would be more like the, the picture on the right. That's kind of like they grabbed onto the, the door handle. That is not, and it's, it was pretty big too. So, yeah. you, can, you know, or like when you're grabbing the handle, you can see little fingerprints of where the human would grab the handle and, you know, touch the car, but that is not, and it was pretty, and there was also like a palm print too. Yeah. So, okay, well, they're, they're letting us know that we're, they're here. That yeah. that uh that image on the left looks like a footprint actually. 
because the toes are so short. I mean, the fingers oh, are so be. short. Yeah, it could so, be. So it's like a maybe a young one just put his foot up there. <laughs> yeah, it could be. They are very rascally. Because they have pretty long fingers. I mean, I think they're longer in proportion to us. Mm -hmm. Well, their whole hand is bigger. Right. Than hand. <laughs> uh, well, we knew that it was, it was bigger than any of our hands. Yeah. Feet, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, right. the one that laid his hand across my stomach that time from one side to the other. That's I mean, yeah. the where the wrist joins the hand was on one side of my stomach and the fingers went all the way to the other side so i mean he was like a grandfather so he was quite a bit bigger than the others but uh yeah it it does um uh, beans look like a footprint with a big yep, toe there footprint. and that's kind of cool whatever it is yeah <laughs> Uh, I've I've had them touch me uh, with their hand before, and uh, actually stick their hand inside my body, and it was like the size of a baseball mitt. Bit it was big. Yeah. <laughs> so this one is kind of hard to see, but um, you can see. Wait, it. This was in Colorado, and it was um in a a natural um enclosed area. That, you know, as in the trees were growing over, and so it was a nice area. But there was just one footprint. No before and no after, just one yeah. footprint. That, that's not I uncommon. Like, okay. <laughs> it popped in through the portal and left through the portal. You know, it, no, no stopping. But it was pretty big because the bottom of the bot the water bottle was where the heel was. Yeah. So was you like, can okay. see that front part of the foot the toes Toe part, and yeah. across that area really well and you can tell too that by that that in relationship to that water bottle that's a big print yeah. and it felt really um buzzy the energy there was really really yeah. buzzy so like okay well we got the one footprint <laughs> i i think this is definitely a personal gift for whoever for you guys were to see it that day because i had a footprint left in 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 the apartment complex that i lived in in miami uh -huh. and it's got carpet grass i don't know if you all know ever know what carpet grass is it's got real tough fibers underneath the the, the green leaf uh -huh. and you you can't you know you can't make a footprint out of it but what was the sasquatch did for me was he put his foot there and rubbed it back and forth till he broke back to ground down through that and into the sort of the coral rock dirt underneath and and since then i've realized that something like this if he just put his if he just stepped on it it wouldn't have made much of an impression but he ha he actually moved his foot back and forth to to crush everything back so it would leave a print so this is like a deliberate gift for the for for whoever's it was meant for well what's I interesting think that is we tried to do the same thing like you're saying put our foot down and see uh, we did not make an imprint at all. Right. You would have to scrape your foot in there to make it, right? Yeah. yeah. I yeah, think that's very that. common. I think that's very common with with prints and mm -hmm. single prints. So you find that they are left as a gift. Yeah. Um, I've and, even had I, I've even had them where they've left a, a, a major glyph right beside it just to really, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. bring the point home. But yeah, I would say that was a gift. I, because I agree, it was you, I right? Because yeah. it was you. Like this. Let me just well, the no. energetic signature too. Even through their energy, they can do like you're branding something. They can take that foot down and put it there, and that energy then marks that space. Right. And yeah. I've seen that a lot when an area, you know, just you just couldn't make a footprint and, and yes they're bigger but even at that token a lot of these that i'm seeing are like an energy signature where they put it down and that energy comes through them yeah. and goes into that earth and and it stays there i agree yeah, it I, does stay there <laughs> actually it. actually actually beans is right uh you know because i'm so i was so involved in big part of my early lessons were with glyphs or whatever the fact they left a glyph there is is he's right yeah um you know 
because it was personal. So they left they left something else that added another layer of proof to it. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Just, just in case you were doubting. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I mean they're they're very when they want to show you something, they're very literal. They don't they don't leave anything to doubt. Right. So those are just little things that we've had, but most of my experiences, I've even had a camera in my pocket, but not even thinking about taking a picture, you know, till afterwards I'm going, well, I guess I wasn't supposed to take the picture because it was all there. But it's yeah. just been amazing. And I just, I look forward to one day being able to sit, you know, around fire, and be able to share stories, learn from them. Um, I know that they're here to help us, to teach us. Uh, that keeps coming through and that they're there to help us. Whatever the change is coming, they're there to help us. And they've been watching us. Um, those who are ready, they say, they will show themselves to. And But yeah. the term ready... Uh, like I said, I don't know if they actually just pop right in front of me, I'd run back, I'd run off and say, sorry, <laughs> you freaked me out here. I'm okay now. But yeah, you know, it's, we never know how we respond, but I think they know how to work with us, especially when they want to continue with that relationship. And everywhere we go, we may meet a new group and, and you know, a new, a new message may come forward, which I just, I just love. You know, and if I get names, I'm like, that's even better. But most of the time, it's the emotional signature or the, the feeling of I can sense their energy rather than knowing them by name. Because there's been a lot that I've encountered and I'm going, OK, I know you're a young male. OK, um, hi. <laughs> you know, and they've done some funny things with us. and.